Hello everyone, welcome to another lab session on digital signal processing using Scilab. So in today's lab, we are going to see how to do or perform linear convolution between signals using a Scilab program. So what is linear convolution? So linear convolution is something that is used in your signal filtering. So you have a music audio, suppose, and you want to get rid of some of the noise or some of the, uh, you want to just smoothen your uh, voice. So what you do is you filter it with uh, uh, another uh, mask or another signal. And this is performed. This filtering is done using convolution. So convolution uh, basically happens in this manner. So a simple explanation would be X of N is equal to 1010. This is a four point signal. I'm taking that as to be my music uh, signal and my filter is h of n which is one zero it is of length two and basically what uh, a convolution does is it scans this signal it scans this x of n with my h of n and it erases the uh, signal or it by smoothening it good so <clears throat> uh, hello everyone welcome to another session Hello everyone, welcome to another session of Scilab for digital signal processing. So in today's lab, uh, we are going to see about linear convolution of signals. So what is linear convolution? Uh, linear convolution is something uh, that we use uh, for filtering between signals. So let me just show you an output, uh, uh, an output that I have here. So if you see, uh, this is your input signal, uh, like I will call this in my program as X of N. And then uh, you have your output. So this is after my convolution. So you can see the difference. You see the difference between this signal and this signal. So this is a smoothened version of your original signal. And that is one of the filters, very common filters that we use uh, in signal processing. That is your smoothing filter or your Gaussian filter. So when I apply a Gaussian filter to this, I'm doing convolution of my signal with my Gaussian filter and I get the output as shown here. All right, so that is about linear convolution. So now let's get to the program writing the code for linear convolution in your Scilab. So let me start with <clears throat> a simple example and then I can scale this for any length sequence. So I'm going to use my input signal to be X of N, which is 1010. So that is the length of my input signal is four. And now my mask, my Gaussian filter or my other signal is H of N. It is usually a shorter signal because that is the filtering signal that is given as one zero. So this is of length two. All right, so what happens in linear convolution is, so you can see I'm taking this one zero one zero and I'm just running this one zero throughout i'm just uh, scanning this entire signal starting from the leftmost position i'm scanning it till the rightmost position and when i'm doing that i am doing some computations that will give me my convolution values between so <clears throat> the first convolution value is obtained by taking the filter to the leftmost corner where i have a single overlap and then i get my values to be 1 into 0 plus 1 into 0. So here there is no value. I am assuming that to be 0. So I get it as this. And now I have my second output to be, I shift my filtering H of N to one bit right, one place right, no, one position to the right. Then I get it in this manner. And then I again, I perform my multiplication of the corresponding values and adding these values 1 into 1 plus 0 into 0. That is my second convolution value. So I keep repeating this. I keep doing this. And then uh, till I get my all the values. So till I reach the rightmost corner where I again I have a single overlap. And that is my last convolution value. So and my output is given to be 01010. Zero, one, zero. Now if you see I have how many what is the length of my convolution output. The length of my convolution output is 5 and how do I get that? So what is my length of my input? My input length is 4 and my filter length is 2 and my convolution output length is 5. So the formula that is that we can come up with for this length of your convolution sequence is L plus M minus 1. 
So when I have my 4 plus 2 minus 1, that is the length of my input is L and length of my output, length of my filtering uh, sequence is 2 and the length of my output is given as L plus M minus 1 as 5. So this is basically what your convolution is and now uh, we are going to write the code for this. So let's uh, get to the coding part. So I am I am starting with clearing my workspace variable using this clear command. Then I'm defining my input sequence, say one, two, three, four. Then I'm defining my second sequence to be one and zero. Then I'm finding the length of my input because I that is my L, right? And that is going to be four here. And this is going to give me my length of my second sequence or my filtering sequence so this input sequence can be your audio signal and this can be your smoothing filter or gaussian filter smoothing or gaussian filter done good so this is how your filtering happens and now this is your main convolution loop so what i have here can be best explained with this tabular comparison so let's get to this so let's take this example for instance i and j all right so just uh, have a look at this i comma j so now my outer loop is i so which is um, looping from 1 to l plus m minus 1 so this is going to be 5 right 4 plus 2 minus 1 so that is my vertical so if you see my columns 1 2 3 4 5 right so these are my <coughs> first outer loop second outer loop third outer loop fourth outer loop fifth outer loop so i have five rows because the first element represents the row the second one represents the column so the inner loop is 1 2 l so if you see the inner loop inner loop i am using it for my which sequence for my x for my original sequence so uh, i'm what i've done is i've used so this is the function this is a matlab function as well as a scilab function so since we are so doing this in scilab so scilab function is using conv and this uh, function is going to give us the convolution output of x of n and h of n and i've written a code this uh, i've written this code to match that output all right so you will be seeing that uh, um, after I run the whole code. So now my inner loop is from 1 to L. And then what that means is my L is what? My L is my original audio signal that is of length 4. And that is exactly what I am seeing. So my second loop, my inner loop, which is J, is going from 1, 2, 3, 4. So what happens is first I reach my for this um, conditional loops then my i is going to be 1 and then my j loops for 1 2 3 4 then for my second i come to 2 then my j loops for 1 2 3 4 so on for third loop third outer loop the inner loop loops four times for the fourth outer loop for fourth i right the inner loop will be for four times so on so this is how i get my five value so my then now i am going to go to the next equation so here i'm going to uh, open up so i've just shown this for here so th this is only for the for statement and now i'm going to show you this statement y of i so my y of i is equal to y of i plus x j star h of i minus j plus one so i have done this uh, here uh, i have shown you this table so if you look at this table now i'm putting so i'm taking the first loop this is my first outer loop so my i is one and j is one two three four so i'm putting i'm plugging in the value of i and j here then i'm getting that to be x of one into h of one x of one i'm just doing it for this part right i'm not doing it for the y and because that is going to be just um, i'm going to add all this uh, all this you know i'm going to add it in horizontal i'm going to add all these values that's basically what i will be doing right with my y of i so i am just computing these values right x of n h of 1 x of 1 h of minus 1 so i've written all this indexing here all right so now what will happen is this negative indexing means they don't they don't exist so 
our scilab cannot process your negative index so which means they have to be get rid of and that is what is basically happening here so if you see this if statement the negative index are avoided in computation because this h of minus 1 h of minus 2 h of minus 4 these all will be get rid of with this if so that if will make sure that these will not come into the picture at all so i remove all the negative indexing from this table then i get the final table to be something like this all right good so now this is how my values are going to be so my how do i compute the values right so my y i is going to be one so that is going to be that is going to give me the first value the second value the third values the fourth values and the fifth values okay so this is how i get these values x of 1 h of 1 x of 1 h of 1 plus x of 2 h of 2 x2 x3 x3 h1 and x4 h1 good so this way you get your output see how simple it is good so your y3 is gonna be this your y4 so I think um, it's pretty much uh, you know if you see this it makes sense for you guys and this is basically what this program is doing All right this is how these for loops and my if loop have they're working in this convolution and then after I do this I can just uh, I take the transpose to match it with this value yb so let us just run this program and now let us go to our scilab and see our output okay so my y is my output so that's coming to be one two three four zero is it right yes and then yb is my output from my matlab scilab code and that is also the same see i have written i put it as uh, here one two three four zero one two three four zero both are ma matching now uh, even if i scale this up so let me make this for an eight point sequence five and um, let me put another value six here and then i will make this to be one zero one so i am just showing you that it can be scaled up for even other sequence because uh, we have written a program and then you see again your values are matching one two four six nine four six one two four six nine four six so this one two four the second output is your scilab function output and the first output is your code output done so that is how you do so you do for a simpler sequence right i did it for a four point and a two point sequence and now i can scale it up to any number of sequence so let me make it uh, seven eight nine ten it doesn't matter so h of n can be one zero or two three i can put any values even minus values can be there because they are just indexing and now if you go and see each will be matching 1 2 4 8 10 11 13 14 13 16 14 4 4 see value to value it is matching so this is how we we are going to do this entire dsp lab session as we are going to do it for a smaller level or a smaller signal length or a smaller um, a number of computations and then we are going to scale it up to any number and then see that it will be giving us the same output done so this is uh, how you do the scilab and uh, I wanted to uh, show one more thing uh, before we uh, you know, finish this convolution program. That is the origin position. So now uh, what happens is in, in all these cases, so in the first case, I have assumed my origin to be the first position, which means the indexing starts from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So that is what uh, it is assumed for my first time. But now um, let us say that is not the case. So I want, I have a seek, I have a sequence. I have my input, which is symmetric across the origin. So which means I have a negative half and I have a positive half, or I have some values on the negative side and many values on the positive side. So it is not starting from zero. So then how do you compute your index for linear convolution? So this is um, important because 
this happens all the time for me because some of the values on the boundaries come on the negative side so i may have to shift the origin a little bit and then when i do that the whole the values my values will be the same but the positioning of the signal is very important because then only we can do uh, the correlate that what you call the mixing and as well as some of the operations like very simple operations like adding two signals are happens at the index level and if your indexing goes wrong your signal starts you know your signal addition turns easily into some kind of an echo or some kind of a distortion so in order to avoid that what we are going to do is i'm going to show you how we fix this indexing problem so now let us say i have my sequence 1 2 3 4 5 and 1 2 3 4 5 my filter and the input are the same it can be any just um, an example i have taken here for you and now the i am giving this position to be third position so which means my indexing for my input is minus 2 minus 1 0 so my zero the origin is in the third position my zero is in the third position and for my second sequence h of n my zero is in the second position good so this is what it is and now what is the position of my zero in the convolution sequence so the position of my zero is again given as this position minus you know plus this position minus one just like how we compute the length of your convolution right <clears throat> so i if this is my three and this is my two my uh, origin of the output is going to be at four and which means now i know my indexing to be so i can fix my indexing so my indexing is this is my going to be my indexing because my zero is going to be at the fourth position which means i have three uh, you know, integers three discrete uh, integers index before that and those index values are going to be minus three minus two minus one and then i'm going to have five after and how do i know that because i know my length of my convolution is going to be the length of my input plus the length of my filter minus one and both my input and my filtering sequence are of length five so it's going to be 5 plus 5 minus 1 and that is equal to 9 all right so this is my index it's very simple right and how do we solve the indexing problem when your signal don't start necessarily from zero done so that is uh, basically your linear convolution using scilab um, uh, i hope uh, this is helpful for you and now if you want these quotes uh, for those who are uh, no, not in my uh, lectures or those who are not connected to me if you still you know if you want these quotes for uh, reuse or you know to for your study please email me or please uh, post your email in the comment section and then i'll be more than happy to uh, mail it to you all right thank you for listening i